Cassiopeia. And up there is one of three Byzantine castles which guarded the coastline of Corfu from the 600s. of the history of Corfu is Venetian. The Venetians ruled this island for centuries. It was the only island never overtaken by the Ottomans. But there is a different history to Corfu, an older history than that, the Byzantine history of Corfu. That's what I'm going to look at today. Love well, these ancient olive groves that are everywhere on Corfu. I don't know how old these trees are, but they look pretty old. I think it was a little bit restored by the Venetians at one period of time, much later than the Byzantine, obviously. But it's still quite a lot of stand. Walls huge. Quite for ages. And there's all this. Stonework in the bushes here as well. I don't know if that's the inner castle. This is just the ramparts out a bit. I don't know. Yeah, this is like the whole castle forever. And this, this wall here, completely reminds me of Hadrian's Wall. The construction is exactly it. like Hadrian's Wall. But the Byzantine Empire was kind of like the Eastern Roman Empire. Probably at It was the same the night. You can just tell that this has been an enormously powerful place in its day. A place of massive, massive importance. Three castles made a triangle around the coast of Corfu to protect the Byzantine Empire against marauding Ottomans and Venetians and whoever else. I'm seriously in awe. This is amazing. It's huge, it's vast. Corfu is packed with tourists. Everywhere you go, this is the first quiet place I've been to. There's nobody here. Look at it. It's like Hadrian's Wall. It's amazing that you can travel these thousands of miles and you see something straight away and you go, ah, oh, that's the same as Hadrian's Wall. Because it was, it's the same designers, the same engineers, the same Roman entrepreneurs and warlords. I really don't want to go too far in there because I don't mind large insects, but when I can't see them, I creep me out a bit. Anyone who's walked along Hadrian's Wall must, must see the, the resemblance there.
belt. To say I'm impressed with that one is an understatement. It was well worth what could be the worst drive. It's the on the twistiest turn the explodes with the worst drivers I've ever seen, but it was worth it. So yeah, if you're in Corfu, get off the beaten track, hire a car, come up and see this for a starter. Cassiope Castle. There's only one, one of three Venetian castles in Corfu and one of them. Apparently, there's no tourist attraction whatsoever. So that's the one I'm really looking forward to. The next Byzantine castle that I want to visit is called Angelo Castro. And it's perched on top of that huge mountain there on the seafront. How do I get there? Drive here itself was an experience and a half, I can tell you. There it is, Angelo Castro. What a sight! Byzantine castles which form a triangle on Corfu's coast and this one is probably in the best position you could ever wish for in a castle quite a climb to get up here View, I'm sure you'll agree. It's been like real ancient steps through the original castle. Anything else they were trying to deflect would have been rather put off by this enormous fortress 300 meters, 300 meters up in the sky. Yeah, if you're coming to Corfu, 
would say a visit to Angelo Castro Castle It's an absolute must If nothing else For the drive itself So that's two Two Of Carfu's triangle Byzantine fortresses. These two are pretty much billed as tourist attractions and I've been the only person here at both of them. So the next one, Gardiki is called, isn't a tourist attraction. So chances are I'm going to be the only person there as well. <laughs> <laughs> 